well, I regret to inform you that your daughter did not make it. She got up in the night to use the restroom, and she fell off the cliff and drowned. In a world shrouded in shadows and secrets, where the line between truth and deception blurs into obscurity, there exists a realm of stories that send shivers down our spines and ignite our insatiable curiosity. These are the tales of death mysteries, enigmatic riddles that challenge the very essence of our understanding of life and its inevitable end. But amid the unsettling narratives and chilling revelations, there is a common thread that binds us all together, a relentless thirst for the truth. We are drawn to these tales not merely as voyeurs of the macabre, but as seekers of justice and understanding. With each mystery, we strive to untangle the web of deceit, to unveil the faces behind the masks, and to reveal the secrets that lie buried beneath layers of deception. In this episode, we embark on a journey into the heart of a death mystery that will challenge our beliefs, our perceptions, and our very understanding of humanity itself. As we peel back the layers of this enigma, we will confront the darkness that dwells within us all and ultimately ask ourselves the most profound question of all. Can we ever truly know the secrets of the dead? Hi, and welcome back to Crime Case Files. For many who knew and loved Lauren Agee, the case is still very much a mystery. The death of the 21-year-old criminal science major from Hendersonville, Tennessee, was declared an accident because it occurred when she was attending Wakefest with friends. However, some details of her death are still a mystery as a result of several unanswered issues and a scanty inquiry. Hi, and welcome back to Crime Case Files. We send our deepest condolences to Lauren, friends, and family, and genuinely hope that no such tragic occurrences will ever take place in the future. Lauren visited Wakefest on July 25, 2015, together with her friend Hannah Palmer, Aaron Lilly, and Chris Stout, who is Aaron's friend. That weekend, Lauren had just had her first encounter with Chris Stout. In Tennessee, there is an annual amateur wakeboarding competition called Wakefest. On Center Hill Lake, about two hours west of Nashville, there is a three-day gathering. Professional wakeboarders compete each year, and hundreds of spectators go to watch. Everyone goes out drinking and sets up camp in cabins and houseboats around the neighborhood marina at night. Lauren announced to her mother, Sherry Smith, that they intended to spend the weekend at a cabin. Lauren had a good time at the beginning of the weekend. Hannah and Lauren posted images of their trip to Wakefest in the car on social media, and she was spotted having fun there by attendees. Chris Yarchuk, a security guard at Wakefest, noticed Lauren at the bar that evening the evening of July 25th. Chris claims that at two in the morning, Lauren, Hannah, Aaron, and Chris left the bar. Chris observed them moving down the dock by the lake. Then they boarded a boat to get to their campsite. Casey Franks also saw her that evening. Lauren attended the same high school as Casey, and she was spotted by Casey at the marina's bar and on the pier. Lauren told Chris that night, that she wasn't interested in him, according to Cassie. She already had a partner and wasn't looking to meet anyone because she was content with him. She merely desired enjoyable times with her pals. Across from the marina on the lake was where Lauren was camping, which was perched on an outcropping. One side of the outcropping drops down 35 feet to the lake, and the other side drops down 90 feet to the lake. Cassie claims that Lauren asked her if she could join her group after learning that they were camped out on a cliff rather than in a lodge. As someone who has slept on the cliff previously and is aware that there is a hammock there that is tied haphazardly between two trees and dangles over the river, which doesn't seem safe, Cassie expressed concern for Lauren. Lauren went to the cliff with Hannah, Aaron, and Chris, but Cassie was unable to accommodate her at her cabin so they did. When Lynn Blair and his son Dylan went fishing on the lake the following day on July 26th, they discovered a young woman's body lying in the water. Lauren was there. Hannah, Aaron, or Chris had not filed a missing persons report for her. But Lauren's mother Sherry had made numerous unsuccessful attempts to contact her during the day. 
That morning, she had contacted her daughter several times and texted her with phrases like, Hello, hey you! Before learning the heartbreaking news that Lauren had passed away, she had not heard from Lauren and was concerned for her. Chris, Aaron, and Hannah were interviewed by police. When asked about their inebriation upon returning to the campsite, they admitted to the police that they had all consumed alcohol the previous evening. Hannah reported to the police that she and Aaron slept in a tent, while Lauren and Chris slept in a hammock close to the cliff's edge. Hannah claims Lauren was not there when they awoke. Because she believed Lauren had gone to meet someone, she stated that she hadn't filed a missing persons report. Her flip-flops, wallet, and phone were all still at the campsite, as well as all of Lauren's other personal items. The DeKalb County Sheriff's Department reported that it did not discover any indication of wrongdoing, and as a result, they concluded that Lauren slipped from the cliff and either perished from the fall or drowned. The amount of alcohol in Lauren's blood was discovered to be double the legal limit. Lauren fell from a cliff, landed on rocks, and rolled into the lake, according to the medical examiner, who declared her death an accident. According to the official investigation, Lauren may have drowned or suffered blunt force injuries after falling from a steep cliff and into the lake. The investigation was completed. Lauren's family undoubtedly didn't find closure, even though it may have been formally closed. Sherry sought clarification. Lauren had left the campsite on July 26th, and she was curious as to how and why Hannah, Aaron, and Chris carried on with their day in spite of this. Why didn't they file a missing person report for her? Sherry stated that she had saw an Instagram post on Chris's account. She stated that it featured Hannah and Aaron on a boat with the caption, Best Weekend Ever, and that it was posted on July 27th. Later, the caption was edited to read, Wakefest 2015 went well this year. I made some new friends, which made it awesome. Sheila Waisaki was hired by Sherry to do her own investigation and compile a report after she started digging into her daughter's death. As Sheila looked through the autopsy images, she noticed what seemed to be a peculiar bite mark on one of Lauren's breasts. She thought Lauren had been choked because of the physical evidence on her body. She was either restrained or choked by someone. Lauren's death was not thought to be the consequence of an accidental drowning, according to Sheila. There was no water in Lauren's lungs, according to the autopsy. Sheila thought Lauren was already dead when she was submerged in the water. She believes Lauren was either attempting to flee or fighting, and as a result of that, she fell back and her head was struck, resulting in blunt force trauma, which is what ultimately led to her death. Sheila speculated that the bruises on Lauren's thighs might have been brought on by someone kneeling on her and holding her down. To compel Hannah, Aaron, and Chris to speak, Sherry sued them for wrongful death in an effort to get their attention. Hannah Palmer, Lily, and Stout all cited their Fifth Amendment privileges not to testify when Sherry Smith sued them for causing Hannah Palmer's death. The profound sadness I experienced when learning of the death of my best friend, Lauren Agee, has only been approached by the painful allegations I somehow contributed to her demise. Palmer began his lengthy statement after the wrongful death case was dismissed. The circumstances and specifics of Lauren's death were described in the complaint. It was claimed that Hannah, Aaron, and Chris killed Lauren either on purpose, carelessly, or negligently. Detective Taylor, the detective who looked into Lauren's death, was called as a witness in the wrongful death lawsuit and was compelled to describe the course of the investigation. He acknowledged that he had no experience with homicide cases and was untrained in the field. In the wake of Lauren's death, a lot of things could have happened, but they didn't, as the deposition made clear. Lauren's body was never swabbed for DNA and no evidence of DNA from under her fingernails or on her body was ever obtained as part of a sexual assault examination. The individual who found Lauren and called 911 was not questioned by Detective Taylor. In addition, he didn't search for clues on the rocks or in the water, talk to the people living on the houseboats that were anchored close to where Lauren's body was discovered, or ask about them. As part of her defense, 
Sherry recruited a hydrologist. According to the hydrologist, Lauren would not have been able to float her corpse against the river to the cove where her body was discovered if she had fallen from the cliff where she was camping. In connection with the lawsuit, Sherry also requested Mr. Laker's advice. He was a police officer in the past, and today he conducts investigative and consulting work, including homicide investigations. In his declaration, he claimed that Hannah, Aaron, and Chris covered up Lauren's murder, that it was a homicide, and that the police investigation was insufficient. He mentioned a few things, like the fact that Lauren's lungs had no water in them. There are injuries on Lauren's body that are inconsistent with a fall and suggest that she was in a battle before she passed away. Lauren's back has symmetrical injuries, the bruises and Lauren's clothing are inconsistent with a fall, and the symmetrical marks suggest that the body was being pulled. As would be expected if someone had fallen through the vegetation on the slope, Lauren's injuries do not include scrapes on the exposed parts of her body. A judge threw out Hannah's wrongful death claim against Sherry because there wasn't enough support for it. However, the Tennessee Court of Appeals reversed that judgment. That implies that the heirs of Sherry and Lauren have the right to file a wrongful death claim against Hannah, Aaron, and Chris. Hannah, Aaron, and Chris maintain that they had no part in Lauren's death and that they were innocent of any crime. Chris Stout was imprisoned on a DUI charge unconnected to AG's passing. As our journey through the labyrinthine world of death mysteries comes to a close, we are left with more questions than answers. The intricate tapestry of human nature, woven with threads of darkness and light, remains as enigmatic as ever. Our quest to understand the secrets of the departed has led us down a winding path, revealing the depths of human depravity and the heights of human resilience. In the aftermath of each revelation, we are left with a sense of both closure and lingering unease. The resolution of a death mystery may bring justice, but it can also leave scars that never fully heal. We are reminded that in this world of shadows and secrets, the line between good and evil is often a blurred one, and the human capacity for both cruelty and kindness knows no bounds. In closing, these death mysteries are a testament to the complexity of the human experience. They remind us that, even in the face of the most unsettling and inexplicable events, our innate curiosity and determination to uncover the truth will always drive us forward. As we bid farewell to this chilling journey, we carry with us the knowledge that, in the realm of death mysteries, the line between fact and fiction is as thin as a shadow's whisper, and the search for truth is a never-ending quest that continues to captivate our minds and souls. If you enjoyed unraveling this twisted tale with us, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more spine-tingling stories. Stay curious, stay vigilant,